Hey everyone, this is the most recent illustration I made and in this time-lapse video I will try my best to explain what it was that I was doing and thinking while creating it as well as pointing out mistakes I did in the process at least the ones that I noticed. If you'd like to see just a process video on a much more condensed time frame as well as no commentary behind it I did made or I did upload that version as well and I will leave a link to it in the description. So this piece it's supposed to be fan art of the video game franchise Stalker and I say it's supposed to be because I myself haven't played m many of the games or haven't played a lot of it. I played Shadow of the Chernobyl a couple of years ago for a couple of hours before I got too scary or before it got too scary and I was a wuss and couldn't continue. Um and also it's not really a depiction of any specific characters or any specific scene, at least it wasn't intentional. If it does resemble something from the games then that's great. But um it was. Uh, I started off this piece very haphazardly, which is kind of the case with everything, honestly, I make. But I was on a Discord call with a couple of close friends, and one of them, he's he's a very big fan of the Stalker franchise. He played a lot of it as as like in his childhood, and he's very excited about the new one coming. And I was just sketching some nonsense before this and then I asked like yeah what should I draw guys and he was like draw draw something akin to stalker with just a couple of guys sitting around a campfire and I really liked that idea um, so yeah that was that was his idea so props to him um, but I also thought it it fit in with kind of the mood of October of Halloween it's it's spooky season and although this illustration itself isn't necessarily spooky um i i think it kind of fits with the theme of Halloween and there's even you might have noticed in the final image there is a some sort of creature monster thing on on the trees watching over them so that there's hints of it um, but yeah, that was sort of the idea behind this drawing or this painting because I didn't really think I would render it as much as I did but I thought I should challenge myself and actually um, do it and also it's been a while since I did anything post-apocalyptic and something like this is is really fun to draw. Like The Last of Us is one of my favorite franchises, like ever. So there's definitely some Last of Us influence in here. So it's not all Stalker. And like I said, I myself am not very familiar with the franchise, and I was mostly going off of what my friend told me about it. Um, but yeah, this. Part the, the the sketching part I did all while we were on a Discord call, um, so this one, like I really had fun with it. Um, I I I noticed that a lot of times when I'm like hanging out with friends and drawing, it's it, like time goes a lot faster. Not to say that I don't have fun drawing on my own, I definitely do, and especially if it's something more complex, I definitely need time for myself to think it through and think about what I'm drawing, but what I'm saying is, and if you've watched um, any of the previous commentary videos I made, one of my biggest issues and troubles is actually just focusing on the thing and working on it. and. I will often have another, like either another uh, file open somewhere so that I can draw something completely different 
or I'll just draw on top of everything which is what I do and I think in this time-lapse video there's going to be a couple of instances where I'm not even doing anything that has to do with the, with this with this image particular image but I'm just doodling random nonsense so it's either always that or in worst case scenario I'll open like Twitter or Reddit and then waste time over there um, but I noticed that when I'm actually like um, talking with my friends it's sort of like it, it's that this distraction that breaks the monotony of just drawing this one thing um, but like I said it's not like I don't have fun drawing I really do it's just I get bored very easily and I'm not a very patient person and that's something you definitely need to have if if you want to improve on, on drawing and painting and just creating images themselves it, it takes time so speaking of time this image I'm not sure exactly how long it took me but I had about um, 18 and a half hours of recording footage um, I had to trim some down as well because I wasted a lot of time on like other things like but still I didn't I couldn't bother to cut everything out that wasn't necessarily um, that wasn't regarding the the final image so there's going to be instances where I sketch something really stupid really random um, here and there but I'd wager that the final image, well, I did have about 18 and a half foot or hours of footage. I'd, I would wager that it took me slightly longer because I do some off-camera work here and there. And that's something else I realized, but I'll come back to that later. Now that I said it out loud, I just remembered. Um, but yeah, time time is definitely one of those things that I try to improve a lot on. Um, but just going back quickly to the image, um, this catching phase was still while on the Discord call, and um, yeah, I didn't really have any idea for the characters or any plans. I just started drawing as like best as I could. Uh, I do go over changes, or I do a lot of changes over time, and those will be noticeable. I'm pretty sure fairly, um, fairly quickly, and I'll notice them, and or I'll point them out anyway. Um, so this guy, I don't know. I just thought maybe like an older guy hanging out with who with two younger guys. Um, it might, now that I said it out loud, it sounds really, um, weird. <laughs> anyway, that, that, that's not what I meant. It, like, just a guy hanging out with his two sons or something and having a good time. Like, trying to make the best out of a very bad situation. That sort of thing. Um... So yeah, even this chair, that was also uh, an idea of a friend. He said uh, like that there's those like fishing chairs that you bring with when you're going fishing. And I thought that was a neat idea. And instead of doing something stereotypical like, I don't know, have him sit on a log, or which is what I sketched out initially, if you noticed, like on a broken down log or some tires or something I, I decided yeah like yeah that that would be a, a nice little touch so that's what I did um yeah this guy he's like arranging the fire and I really messed up his face over here I'll I'll definitely do his face uh, better later um th this is what I was talking about uh, when I say when it's better to just draw on your own and focus without any distractions, without 
I don't know, like Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Um, so yeah, you can see this is already the next day because I couldn't really focus anymore. Um, so I deleted entirely the first guy and I redrew him like kind of similarly. Um, and I'll point that out, but yeah, I had a lot of fun drawing the background as well. Um, so this is now me on my own trying to figure it out and drawing this guy from the beginning again. Like I said, he didn't really turn out all that differently from the original sketch, but it is what it is. Like A lot of times I'll do these unnecessary changes. Um, although I don't think it was unnecessary, he did turn out a bit better. Um, but yeah, coming back to the whole time thing, it's something I'm very self-conscious about when drawing and painting. And I always think my pieces take way longer than they should. Um, although with this one, I have to admit, I was very surprised when I saw how many hours of footage there actually was, which is another su such a big benefit of these videos is that I actually get to see how much time I invested in a piece, which is something I'm just too disorganized to actually do, like to time myself. Uh, so these recording videos, or these recordings help a lot with that. Um, yeah, like disregarding the whole thing that a lot of nonsense is recorded as well with me sketching random stuff, but other than that it really does help a lot. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm very... I always think about how much time it takes me to actually finish a drawing or an illustration. And with this one I was actually quite surprised because I thought it took way longer than it actually did. Um, now the reason for that is mostly because of how much difficulties I had with the lighting and the values. And that's something, again, I know I, I mentioned in the previous videos, is that the toughest parts of a painting for me are values and color. And I will touch on that a bit later when I actually get to the painting and when I'm done with the whole sketching layer. Um, but for now, what I'm trying to do is sort of make it a bit more look to make it look a, a bit more post-apocalyptic and like yeah, just bags are a great way to do that. Like mod. I noticed like modifications on bag, on bags and like old, um, stitched up and banged up uh, backpacks are are a great way to indicate you know they they're trying to get what they can and they use it the best the best way they can, and that doesn't apply just to backpacks but just really everything like. Uh, their clothes, I right, made them a bit janky, a bit stitched up, a bit old, or I try to at least, but yeah, there's that gas mask uh, on the tree hanging there. I thought that would be a cool idea, like on the, on the tree stump, although I did make the straps on it way too long. I realized that, but I decided it would just be a cool little visual flavor. Um, so yeah, this guy, he's playing a guitar. I had a lot of trouble with the guitar as well, specifically because of the perspective and how symmetrical a guitar is, or it's supposed to be at least. Um, but one thing that I noticed, and it's something that I mentioned, um, is that it's way more difficult to draw when I'm conscious of the fact that this is being recorded. And I decided to make like a little, a little, I, I guess, like experiment. And when I had troubles drawing something, I decided to turn the camera off and see what difference that would make. And it made a really big difference because I actually then managed to draw it 
kind of well. Like with his face now, I'm having a lot of trouble. I do sort it out eventually. Uh, but with the guitar, I remember while drawing it, I remember thinking, oh my god, I do not know perspective. I am such a loser. How could I not know this? This is horrible. Um, and it's very, it's one of those things where you're conscious about people seeing your mistakes and it's something I mentioned in my previous video is that I think that's good. Like, I love it when people openly say I did this wrong and then this wrong because it's so much easier to see well, to see what they did wrong and then actually try to do it better or improve on it but there's still that stupid voice in my head that says you don't know how to draw this is stupid, this looks stupid and people are going to notice which again is kind of my goal I, I like if anybody like I doubt anybody is even watching these but like in the best case scenario somebody's going to see what I did wrong and then improve upon it in their own drawings and, and paintings because I myself am not a professional, I'm not a teacher, I, I'm also just learning this f for the fun of it. I mean I do get commissions occasionally but it's not something I make a living out of. Um, so yeah, like this is what I was saying. I do random sketches throughout just to break the monotony of it and you know this one it actually makes sense it's a gas mask but it, it didn't make the funnel image it was just it was an excuse to draw something else for a bit um so yeah uh, i decided to make these big trees like very dried up trees i'm imagining this is like um autumn, winter time period, maybe something in between because of the clothes and, and there's no leaves or anything so I was going for that spooky scene but you know also making it a bit light-hearted with them just having a good time so yeah this is the other backpack I do repainted completely and entirely um, but one thing that I try to do with the backpacks is add like on the side like that what I draw, drew right there like little holsters for melee weapons um, it's something I picked off of from The Last of Us and there's definitely a lot of influence of that franchise in this one like I said um, it, it is one of my favorite franchises so I, I don't think that's really a surprise and my friends definitely weren't surprised by it either I basically was really annoying with wh while I was waiting for the second game to come out but anyway um, yeah I'm not sure if I nailed the whole stalker aesthetic I hope I did uh, and I hope this isn't just a post-apocalyptic piece that I say it's f stalker fan art but my friend seems to think that I did a good job, so I'll, I'll take his word for it. I trust him. Um, but other than the characters, um, the background, I had so much fun with it. Uh, with the house and everything, I decided to, you know, to further accentuate the fact that it's supposed to be spooky. I added a little mist, so it's all a bit foggy and and. Um, what's the word, like, ominous, sure, we'll, we'll go with that, so that was a lot of fun as well. Decided to add a different kind of tree, so it's not just big tall pine trees or whatever they are, or no, not pine trees, pine trees have leaves, but I don't know what they're called in English, um, it's, yeah, just to make it a bit more interesting. So with the drawing part 
it, it was going fairly smoothly without much trouble although like I said there were a couple of instances where I had trouble like for example with the guitar as well as with the guy in the middle I didn't I couldn't really figure out the way I wanted to draw him or his face particularly I had a lot of trouble with that and I was messing up the perspective and anatomy it looked horrible so I did turn off the recording for that as well to see if I could do it better and I actually did it was surprising um, but yeah like I said the drawing part it was going fairly smoothly the trouble began or the trouble began when I started rendering and specifically when I started rendering the fire or the lighting from the fire casting onto the foreground uh, with the background I had a lot of fun painting like I said with the whole mist and the dark blue sky illuminated by the moonlight um, I also said that as well in, in one of the first or well the first uh, commentary time lapses I made I really like I, I like those stylized moonlit nights or moonlighting with the whole blue going out but yeah that's mostly for the background for the foreground I it's mostly warm light from the fire and I didn't I didn't really add any moonlight to the characters or to the uh, front of the painting I even thought about maybe leaving the guitar out and letting the guy sort of air guitar but realized that looks stupid so I did add the guitar in later. Um, but yeah this is where I said that I had troubles with painting the guy and you can see there was a big skip there. That's when I turned off the recording and tried to actually draw him without many mistakes and it turned out okay um... oh yeah this is yeah this was what I was talking about I do a lot of these stupid sketches in between and you know in the season of Halloween and October I thought I need to do something spooky and something that maybe could be in the game like I don't know much about it like I said but yeah I, I, ju I was just messing around and, and having fun he sort of turned out like uh, like one of those ghouls from The Witcher I realized that wasn't intentional but yeah I don't know what this is some kind of troll or something it's really interesting to look back at these videos like this is the first time I'm watching this video so, oh yeah, this was supposed to be one of those bloaters or clickers from The Last of Us. But anyway, um, yeah, moving on to the drawing. Um, I really like drawing and, and sketching out. It's so fun. And the reason why I feel like painting isn't as much fun for me is because I'm just, I just didn't, I'm not good at it as well as I am with drawing. Not to say that I'm really like super duper good with drawing either. There's a lot of perspective mistakes even in this one. Um, but yeah, I decided to add a little knife and gun holster to the guys just to further make it a bit more post-apocalyptic. Um, once I actually finished with the illustration, I sent I sent it to um, the to the friend and he really apparently he really liked it I hope he did um, and I said like what would you, if there's one thing what would you change what would you do differently and he said just add a couple of more guns or something to make it look a bit more spooky or 
you know, post-apocalyptic. So that's what I did. I, I did add this AK-47. It was really difficult to draw. I, I, I'm really stupid when, when it comes to drawing guns. Um, I tried to make it... Yeah, I, I don't know, it looks weird. I rendered it really badly as well. But in the end, I do make some changes um, to the painting, and I will go over them. But yeah, this is me trying to figure out the guitar, having a whole lot of trouble with it. I drew guitars before, and I had just as much trouble with them. And I think the major reason why I did have so many troubles, or as much trouble as I did, was because I didn't break it down as well as I could have, or should have, rather. I don't know if I could have broken it down more better. But instead of you know seeing it as a guitar, to just see it as like this cylinder here or this um, rectangle here, and just sh using shapes and forms to make it better. So this was about the time when I started painting, and first I decided to yeah just do well one to again distract myself and, and draw something different for a bit or paint something different Two, I guess I could use it as an excuse to warm up even though I don't really know if that helps me at all for the painting and three and I guess this is the most important part to trying trying to figure out what it is um, that makes this picture or this reference so unique or maybe not unique but what it is that I like about it and what it is that I would like to extract from it and implement in my painting. Uh, so this is what I did with this one. There's another one coming up really shortly as well. Um, and specifically it was um, I, like I knew this is the sort of lighting I, I wanted to do for the background for the whole moonlight stuff. And the biggest mistake I think I made in this whole painting is that I didn't do the same thing for firelight and for campfire light and for figures lit by firelight or by a campfire and that's why the painting suffered so much in the end and I'm not the biggest fan of it and how it came out um, that being one of the reasons for it I don't think I did the lighting on it very well um, but yeah this is Again, a totally different game franchise, Metro. Uh, I did actually play this one, or at least the newest game, Metro Exodus, for a bit. Um, it's coincidentally also a post-apocalyptic um, survival horror game. But yeah, it's it's really fun, and again, it, it I, gu I guess it's kind of similar to Stalker, maybe a little bit. Actually, maybe not. I don't know, but. It was something that I was trying to um, break down to these screenshots and figure out how I could replicate something like that, like, at least based on it in my painting. So with this one, like with the first image, I didn't do a lot of hue changes. It's mostly entirely blue, like everything. Over here, I did actually make a lot of hue changes, and that's because I tried to color pick from the reference. I saw that there were hue changes, and then I tried to find that same color on my own, because I, I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of color picking from an image and then using that same color, um, mostly because I think I personally don't learn much from that, and um, it's sort of not cheating, or maybe it is, but that in itself isn't bad, but the part of it, or, or yeah, like the part of painting and, and getting good is being able to nail colors, like maybe not from the first try, I don't think I'll ever reach that level, but at least to make it resemble somewhat like what it is you're trying to have in your head. I don't know, it's hard to explain. This is why I said that I'm not a teacher at all, and I'm <laughs> I'll never be. Anyway, um, with all of my paintings recently, I 
decided to add this orange red underpainting. The reason for that, honestly, I cannot even say why, or I mean I can, uh, I think, but I first saw it, a lot of these very good painters do it, and I was like, well, it's obviously doing something, and people who know this stuff better than I do are doing it, so I should maybe do it as well. Um, and I guess the reason for it is it's nice that if 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 there are some um, like a couple of little creeks or crevices that you didn't paint over, it's nice to have that stark red or orange pop out a bit. At least that's what I think it's for. Oh boy, I'm sketching something else again. Um, Alright, I was trying to do perspective or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I saw that technique used first by um, Ahmed Aldori on YouTube. He's he's I, he's really good. I learned so much from him. He, he's a really good painter. Um, and yeah, I thought I wanted to try to do something similar. And it's it's also just fun to splash paint around haphazardly. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what these sketches are. Um, I remember doing them and everything, but. It's really weird. I was thinking about cutting all of this out from the video as well, but then noticed that that's too much work f for me to even bother with it, so <laughs> I just decided to leave it in. Yeah, going back to the painting, um, like I said, I did have a lot of trouble with it, as is usually the case when I'm drawing or, or making bigger illustrations. Um, so, actually, in the past couple of months, it it really is sort of something I've been, I think, focusing on the most is painting. Um, I really realized, like just this year, early this year, or maybe not early, but like, yeah, it was actually early. I remember doing a couple of portraits. Um, I really liked... Uh, I, I had a lot of fun trying to make my paintings look traditional and maybe like oily, like, like it's done with oil paint, uh, like with textured brushes and being sort of chaotic about it and not for example, not layering every single thing um, and not yeah, not being too picky about some things if, if you know what I mean um, so for example with the characters the way I did or the way I worked previously is I probably would have first of all separated the characters which is actually what I did in this case as well but I would also separate the elements on the characters and then paint them individually. So, like, their clothes, their layers of clothes, like jackets, undershirt, or whatever it is they're wearing, um, different layer for jeans, different layer for um, shoes, for backpacks, whatever. For this one, I actually decided to do it all on one layer. So, I mean, the characters themselves are layered on different layers, but... Um, yeah, I wanted to try to not be as tedious about it because that also takes so much fun away from me because then I have to keep track of where everything is and have to like organize everything and I don't like it. Um it's it's boring and so I had so much more fun just um being a bit more chaotic and loose with it. So, I mean, I still do layers, obviously, I do a lot of them. Uh, but if you watched the Bungo video that I did, the uh, guy of the jumping from the tower, I worked on like five layers max um, 
throughout that painting and as much as I'd like to admit it was because I wanted to improve my painting skills it was actually because of hardware difficulties but it was like definitely a learning experience and a learning curve with it and I think it helped me a lot and it helped me realize that it's not so bad um, to not have everything layered and everything in its own place or whatever. Um, I still have troubles merging layers because I'm always afraid that I'll need something from before. But um, I'll, I hope I'll get there at one point. So this is what I mean. I'm blocking in the colors without really um, um, separating them. It's It's everything on one layer. And yeah, it's it, it was a lot of fun. Um, something I aim to improve as well with my paintings. It, it's sort of similar to that. It's seeing the painting as a painting and painting everything like at once. I guess it's a bit hard to explain. But what I mean by that is instead of thinking like in this case, what I did, and I think the painting suffered from it as well. Um, when I get to rendering uh, the backpack and the gun on the lower left corner, I saw that as like a separate element. I saw that as a gun and a backpack and I didn't really see it as a part of the painting. And so it looks very stupid. It looks like, um, it almost looks like I cut it out from something separately that I did and then plastered it onto this one. And another thing, pro potentially even a bigger problem, is with the characters. Um, I feel like they ended up looking very uh, disheveled and... what's the word? Like, disconnected, I guess, from the entire painting because I did them separately. Or not not just actually the characters, but the whole foreground. Um, so this background, like I said, I had a lot of fun painting it because I guess I was a bit more confident with the lighting scenario in it. And also, anyway, it's it's the background, so there's not as much detail um, as say in the foreground. So I was I did have some leeway in there and. Um, some, I guess, room for mistakes that weren't as noticeable or, or weren't as noticeable in the final product as they would be in the foreground, which is where the focus is uh, with whole fire. Uh, but yeah, I had a lot of trouble painting the fire, speaking of, so it took me a couple of days of me just sitting on the painting and not being very sure how to proceed with it. Um, it's one of those things where I... like another reason for these random sketches that I do is because I'm unsure of how to proceed with something and then I'm kind of afraid that I'll mess it up and then I'll just draw something else. It's sort of one of those things where you're kind of running away from your problems. Yeah, I'm, I'm that kind of person, unfortunately. Um, or like procrastinating on them. So I, I realized a good method would be to procrastinate. Like, this is what I'm doing right now. I knew that I needed to paint a fire next, but I wasn't really sure how to do it. So I was like, I'll just draw something else and pretend that I'm not... Um, um, discouraged by it, I guess. Um, but th this is something that I noticed. It, like it's it's way. It, it's actually way better to actually just procrastinate on something by doing something else, even if it's if it seems like it's not productive. But anyway, that, like that's entirely different. Uh, so yeah, I I think it's quite noticeable like when I just sketched this, how much differently I approached it than everything else in this painting. Um, because like I was 
okay with sketching, but with painting this fire I wasn't. Um, so something else I'm, I'm really trying to improve with my paintings, or not not the paintings themselves necessarily, or the drawings, but just the process behind it is not to zoom in so much and as much as I do. And you can see me flipping the canvas around and zooming in and out very frequently. I'll do like a brush stroke and then I'll zoom out to see how it looks and then I'll zoom in again and then do another brush stroke and then zoom out again. And it's just so det detrimental to the process and to the time and everything that I really need to get better at it and actually get more confident and and yeah just more sure when painting something that I don't need to flip the canvas every round every time I make a couple of, of lines or something um, and I think the origin of that comes from when I was starting to draw and paint and I would watch these YouTube videos and everybody was yelling like flip your canvas flip your canvas and I got really spooked by that and I remember I was drawing this one thing and that was like I didn't know that canvas trick that flipping canvas flipping trip trick um, and I did it and I realized oh my god this looks horrible and I thought it looked okay before but when I flipped the canvas it looked really bad um, in case you don't know what I'm talking about um, I imagine like if anybody's going to watch these videos it's probably going to be somebody else who paints and draws but um, if you weren't aware of it uh, like flipping the canvas people do it because um, it helps reveal a lot of proportion issues, a lot of perspective issues as well. Um, and that's my alarm going off. Um, but anyway, it, it helps a lot with... It, it sort of gives you a fresh eye on the whole thing. Um, and I, I think I read somewhere that the reason for that is like depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed, your drawings become, or they like lean on one side or the other, so then when you flip the canvas it looks really off, but yeah, I, th I think I do it way too much, honestly. Um, and like I said, I think the reason for that is when I started drawing, I, I, I sort of got this perpetuous fear of not flipping my canvas enough or often enough, so I decided to do it excessive or well I didn't it wasn't a, it wasn't an active decision it was more like you know just flip the canvas flip the canvas um but yeah so this is what I was saying the fire I had a lot of trouble with it you saw I did nab some references from there but I don't know I'm not the happiest with how it turned out and this is uh my least favorite part, or like my least favorite part of this whole illustration, and the reason why I think it didn't turn out quite as well as I hoped it would, was because, um, b because of this fire and firelight, um, and I didn't, like I said, I didn't really study it as much as I should have to in order to get it right um, but yeah like I said it took me a couple of tries to at least get it to this point where I thought all right I, I'm sick of looking at this thing I'll just move on and, and paint the rest of the picture um, but the thing with values and lighting is that at least I feel like it and that's the case with me um, and I might be wrong on this, but for example, with something like perspective, I'm much more I am much more comfortable with it because it's very I I feel like perspective is much simpler than value because it's very black and white, pun intended. But no, the, with perspective, it's very easy to to see if you did wrong or not. Uh, and really anybody can see perspective issues and anybody can notice them and it's a, it's a very it's 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 a case of being 
like you either did it right or you either did it wrong so there is no in between um it, it's essentially just mathematics it, like movement in a 3d room um now i'm getting the neural algebra flashbacks but uh yeah it's it's something that's a lot easier to i guess wrap my head around and with values and lighting now obviously there are um that there is a structure to that as well of course there is like um you know the distance between the lighting or the light source and the object that's that it illuminating it um the intensity of the light source itself um the materials that the object is is made out of that has a major impact on light as well like you know if you look at uh, some shiny objects like why are they shiny or what makes them different um most of that is because of contrast i think uh, just putting very bright values next to dark ones um and all of that that's just values that we're not even getting into color theory so you know what what sort of hue are shadows supposed to be if um the light is this and that color so it there's so much to it that i don't even know where to begin to learn but you know with each painting i hope i do it a bit better than last time uh, it's definitely my weakest point i think when it comes to painting and drawing or when it comes to art is those pesky values i don't i don't know how to do them correctly or just lighting itself it in most cases it doesn't make any sense at all um and that's something that is really ir irritating to look back on um so for example with this one i feel like um i didn't do or i didn't add enough contrast on the characters from the um fire and then the the colors or the shadow colors are not what they should be i feel like um but yeah that's just one of those things that i'll have to get better at with time this is what i was saying about the um gun and the backpack i spent way too much time on it for some reason and it ended up looking very copy pasted essentially um but yeah it's it's just one of those things again that I'll have to work on I feel like a broken record by now I think another big mistake that I make is I have this mindset of the more time you invest in something the better it will be and while that certainly is the case with a lot of things sometimes i feel like in drawing and painting it's not necessarily always true um so something may look good or like at least on an acceptable level but then i'll think to myself oh but i didn't spend as much time as i should have on it so i'll end up overworking it and over rendering it and over just it it ends up looking like that copy paste stuff that i was talking about i think i did that with uh, with the gun and the backpack or with these trees as well like i painted trees and i drew trees so many times before and with these ones i was like i need to get them really right like really well and really right so i have to i absolutely have to spend so much time on them um i think that even becomes more noticeable when i'm doing commission work so it's like i i almost have this mindset of people are paying me for the time i invest in the painting or in the drawing and not not for the final product itself and that's a really bad mindset to have and again it's just something that that I'll hopefully fix in the near future. Um so with the vegetation like on the trees and everything around there that's what I was talking about um about that last of us 
um, impact on this piece. Yeah, it's I, I just the world of The Last of Us is beautiful and one of my favorites. So I decided to add something kind of like it over here, but you know, in the end, this is supposed to be stalker fan art. So I hope this does fit in with the themes of the game, and it it actually does count as fan art of that franchise of that games or, or those games. Um. So yeah, this is about the time where I started to render the characters. Um, here I am, sort of separating them and and just tr painting over them. And like I said, I tried to render it all on just one layer. Um, or well, like there's the base layer and then the clipping layer on top. Uh, the second layer for that is the very subtle warm lighting I did over them and I decided not to hide it um, because that's what I would usually do is I would paint the character as if they were on a normal lighting scenario like if there was a white light somewhere and then over top I would add um, the firelight and with this one I tried to do it a bit differently to see how it would go and I actually added the lighting first at least very um, what's it called like nods to it, like, I don't know, like, it's very subtle, that's the word I was looking for, like subtle lighting to it, and then I rendered over the top um, of it all, so technically it is three layers, but I don't know if I'd count those other two, hopefully, like, as I get better, I'll dumb it down to one, and there's nothing wrong with using many layers, like, you can see I still used a whole ton of them, um, so I'm not... I'm not one of those people that are like, oh, layers are bad, digital art isn't real art or anything like that. It's, you know, it still takes time and it, it's just for my own sake. Um, like, even if, 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 you know, I ever have to end up sharing the PSD folders of these things, or well, in this case, Clip Studio folders, but you can convert it to a PSD folder. <laughs> Um, or not folder file, I mean. Um, you know, if, if if I'm working for an art director, they might actually want to see the layering and, and the whole structure of it. And I think the biggest nightmare for me would have to be to actually organize all of it. Um, I think that would be way harder than the painting itself. Because you can see now, I don't really ever name my layers or my groups or anything. I just... And I don't know, it like it works for me. I'm I'm not very lost or confused about my layering system, but I imagine like if I gave this to somebody they'd be like, What am I looking at? So this is actually the final stretch of the painting. Um there's only about like ten minutes left of the time lapse. And most of it is just um, rendering these characters. I do add a couple of details here and there later as well, and like I said, off camera, but I will point those out as I did with my previous videos once I actually get to them. Um, so, with the characters themselves, I'm not entirely happy either with how boring they turn. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, boring, I guess is the word. Uh, both from a technical standpoint um, as well as from a like storyteller storytelling character um, aspect firstly uh, like I said I feel like I didn't nail the rendering on them as well as I should have you can see me doing now adding these yellow highlights to this guy and I really have no idea what I'm doing I'm kind of eyeballing everything um, and that's like good as well in some cases, but I know that I would have been it it would have turned out much better if I had actually known what like how firelight actually works and functions and what it makes it different from you know moonlight like obviously there's the whole well this is warm light this is cold light but there's so much more to it than that I feel like 
Um, but also, like I said, from the character storytelling uh, standpoint, it's something I mentioned in my previous videos is with characters I always try to um, like tell as much as I can about them without using using words so just visual language uh, so I think this is the third time I'm repeating it but the whole Sherlock Holmes analysis process like that you can pick apart a character just based on what they're wearing how they're carrying themselves um, you know, so posture goes into that. Um, like, yeah, all of these baubles and whatever it is they're wearing on them. Um, but with this piece, obviously, it's not uh, it's not like concept art. It's like finished illustrations. So obviously, the characters are doing something different, like in something very specific, like you know, sitting around a fire or playing guitar or um, like feeding the fire. Um, so with that, obviously, like there is still room. I feel like somebody much more experienced and and somebody who knows about this stuff would still be able to pull off some character storytelling within there. I tried to do it. I'm not entirely happy with how it turned out, though. Um, like for example, obviously the guy with the guitar, like you know. He seems kind of boring, like he's just a guy with a guitar. Uh, but it's definitely something that I have to think about and how I could improve on it to just include these characters in bigger illustrations such as this one and still pull off that um, character storytelling aspect. Um, over here I forgot to press pause on OBS, or I thought I did, but I didn't. I didn't forget it. I just misclicked. Uh, so there's a tiny pause here, but it shouldn't be too long. Um, but yeah, The idea also like that came through my head while drawing all of this, and this is everything that I should have thought about before I actually even started painting. Is that maybe this guy in the middle is like the youngest of the three, and I don't know, is getting made fun of, or like they're teasing him or something. Um, maybe they're just trading stories or whatever. And, you know, the old guy is more serious. He's not really laughing as much as the other guys but he's still having a good time I, s I still think like the core um, like the core what's it called reason or, or goal of this painting is just making the best out of a bad time you know they're just they're living in a shithole probably but they're, they're, they're still having fun and they have each other, so that's always great. I think I rendered this guy, uh, this third guy with the guitar, the worst. I think I drew him the worst as well, definitely. Um, his facial structure doesn't make much sen sense, especially when I render it. Um, yeah, I, I messed up the planes of the face completely, and it doesn't really make much sense. As well as the guitar, my god, the the neck of the guitar is really long. Like I don't, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a neck that long on a guitar. That that thing probably has like forty frets or something. Um, but. Yeah, it's it's one of those things again. I didn't really find any reference, or truthfully, I didn't even try to find any reference of a guitar sitting or uh, of a guy playing guitar sitting down on the floor. So, like, even his legs look very wonky. Um, oh yeah, another character design aspect that I added is uh, those knee pads, and I thought like, the, well, I should have made it more obvious, but 
uh, the idea behind it was that they were stitched on to the pants that he already had or maybe they were like pork pants who knows um, so you know if he's doing some looting or if he's going out he's probably going to be on his knees a lot um, and that's uh, like I think hands and knees uh, those are the most obvious uh, places you can look at to know if a person is um, maybe, I guess maybe not active but well yeah active like if they're if they're you know moving or whatever like if if you fall your instinct is to actually f like land on your hands so that you protect your head obviously and your knees as well like even if you remember like probably as a child you had a lot of scraped knees so like yeah knees and and hands are a great way to uh visually tell somebody that this person does a lot of work or does a lot of adventuring or looting or whatever the setting may be uh, speaking of hands I really did <laughs> I did procrastinate on them a lot I, I completely disregarded the hands I just did a couple of smudges and yeah I just didn't feel like rendering them so I left them mostly as they are right now So going to the final stretch of the painting, um, I'm trying to adjust a couple of more values and adding, or to add a bit more contrast to the foreground, um, because in the end, like that's what um, what differentiates between the background and the foreground is just the level of detail and, and contrast between them. So yeah, like like you can see, I really very vaguely went over the hands um, so the the area around the campfire was really boring so I I decided to add a couple of cans and, and pots and whatever um, it, it's something that I drew in but didn't paint until now um, yeah adding some shrubbery in the background a couple of birds um, and I think that's about it for the most part. I do add like one fi final uh, thing is I go over the top um, of everything. I go with a layer of like another, I guess, extra layer of lighting. In this case, I use the overlay mode uh, just to make the area more illuminated. Uh, because as you can see now it looks very like yeah I'm doing it right now so I added a couple of sparks first just to sell the whole, whole fire thing and then over there I added a couple like it, it's very with a very soft brush uh, just go over the fire and everywhere around it to make it look like it actually illuminates the thing and isn't just this bright single point uh, but it actually has light emanating from it and then this very final detail uh, is just a spooky monster uh, stalking them from the trees, pun intended. Um, so yeah, this was the final image. As you can see, it's slightly different. Um, like I said, I added a couple of changes to it. Um, so I'll go over those changes right now really quickly. Uh, yeah, like I said, my friend gave some feedback that the like it could use a bit more weaponry so I added like a double barreled shotgun in the corner on the right corner there and if there's one thing that I learned from this painting is that I don't know how to draw guns like not even talking about rendering them I don't know how to draw them so I have to do more gun studies um, I also added a little um, knife I rendered it in for the guy with the guitar and as well as he has an axe strapped to his backpack um, I rendered or I touched up 
some of the grass a bit more to make it look more lush and, and uh, not as stiff as it is. And uh, that's another thing, I have to learn how to paint vegetation better. And then the final detail that I uh, added while I was catching it, but didn't add it in while painting it until now, is scratch marks on the trees. So, you know, there's some nasty stuff going around on this forest. Um, and actually on that left tree on the foreground, I think I overdid it way too much, and the tree looks so much more flat now, it doesn't really look like it's a cylindrical form like it's supposed to be. Uh, but maybe I'll come back to it later and fix it up. But yeah, that's it. That's the end of the whole process. Uh, I hope, if anything, that this was at least enjoyable to watch and to listen to me ramble about it. And in best case scenario, it was actually educational and you picked something up from it and could use it to better your own paintings and drawings. But other than that, thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.